On the night of October the 28th, Israel carried out one of the most massive bombings of Gaza since the start of the war. The Times of Israel publication reported Israeli ground forces with tanks entered the Strip. There is no internet, no television, no electricity. The region has in fact been cut off from the world since Friday. IDF spokesperson Daniel Hagari called on all residents of northern Gaza to immediately move south and announced the IDF is expanding its ground operation. On Saturday, October the 28th, he reported the first results. We move through the stages of the battle in the Gaza Strip. This operation involves infantry, armored, combat engineering and artillery forces, accompanied by heavy fire. The National Security Forces and the IDF were able to kill more Hamas commanders and terrorist commanders. Among them is the leader of the Air Force, who was a central partner in the planning of the events of October 7th. In addition, we killed the commander of the Gaza Navy and other commanders. The humanitarian situation in southern Gaza is another point of Hagari's statement. According to him, Israel will allow more trucks to bring food, water and medicine there. It is the situation in which civilians find themselves in Gaza that is of particular concern to the international community. The UN Security Council resolution aimed at resolving the humanitarian crisis was blocked by Russia and China. The UN General Assembly in turn adopted a document calling for an immediate truce. The representative of of Palestine supported the resolution, but the permanent representative to the UN and the Israeli foreign minister, on the contrary, criticized it because Hamas was not mentioned in the document. Canada proposed adding the following paragraph to the Jordanian resolution. The General Assembly unequivocally rejects and condemns the terrorist attacks by Hamas that took place in Israel starting on the 7th of October 2023 and the taking of hostages, and calls for their immediate and unconditional release. But the amendment was supported by 88 countries, 53 delegations opposed and 22 abstained. Thus, the amendment did not receive two-thirds of the votes of the delegations present in the hall and did not pass. From a publication on the UN website. Western leaders continue to make solidarity visits to Israel following U.S. President Joe Biden, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and many others who visited the country during the first two weeks of the Hamas invasion, Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte, French President Emmanuel Macron and Czech President Peter Pavel arrived in Israel. They met with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and expressed their support in the fight against terrorists. Meanwhile, the Hamas leadership visited Moscow. Russia is the only state that received them on an official visit after the militants attacked Israel. Now what Russia is doing, trying to demonstrate that they are supposedly ready to negotiate more effectively. That while causing up to terrorists, they are ready to listen to them and legitimize them, call them fighters and so on, say that they represent some kind of state, not clear which one and so on. These are again attempts to get out of some kind of isolation and demonstrate at least some work. This is also an indicator that who else can they talk to? The Ukrainian authorities have evidence that Russia helped Hamas prepare an attack on Israel, said Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council Oleksiy Danilov. Moscow wants to believe that the world community's attention will no longer be focused on Russian aggression against Ukraine, so the Federation is interested in escalation in the Middle East. Reported by Diana Kulesnik, Valeria Nekipelova, UTV News.